This conference will now be recorded. No, but it just was cute. No, I'm good. Let's do a little bit, and then I'll do it for the rest of the time. You might want to do something. Just a reminder to everybody to mute, please. Folks, I think, that haven't muted their phones. Could you please mute your phone? Thank you. Okay, welcome everybody. Are we are we recording and ready, Wayne? Actually, the recording started, but I'm going to live start the live stream. So give me a minute, and I'll stay on the line while I get this going. So hold on just a okay. minute. Okay. You tell me when you're ready. Okay. We're live. <laughs> We're live. Okay. Ready to Great. roll. Um, okay. Welcome, everybody. It is May 7th, 2020 at 6.02 p.m., and we're calling the Lincoln County Public Budget Meeting um, to order here. Um, I'm going to do a um, roll call uh, here in introductions. This is Commissioner Jacobson with Lincoln County. Do I have Commissioner Hall on the phone? Yes, you do. Great, thank you. How about Commissioner Hunt? I'm present, thank you. Great, thank you. And then moving to our budget committee members, do I have Linda Roy? Here. Great, thank you. How about John Beard? I'm here. Okay, and how about our newest budget committee member, Carrie Priest Boyd? I'm here. Great, welcome. We have our full me? budget. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. We have our full budget budget committee member um, present. I also just want to um, take a chance to do introductions to other people on the phone. Also, just an opportunity for some kind of sound check so we can work through any technical issues now. So, Wayne, can you introduce yourself? Wayne Belmont, County Council. Great. Thank you. How about Christy Peter? Okay, moving on. How about um, Mike Herford? Oh, you're I'm, here. Okay. I'm here. Great. How about Wiley Thompson? Well, Wiley Thompson, Regional Director for Extension. Great. How about Deanna Gravel? Deanna Gravel, Finance Office. Great. How about that must be Laura Braxing, Ireland? I'm present. Liz Olson. Can't hear you, Liz. Still can't hear you. I see you. Still can't hear you. You might want to try calling in. But this is why we do this in the beginning, so we can work through issues. So we'll, we'll try again in a minute. How about Sheriff Landers? Good evening, I'm here. Okay, great, thank you. How about Rebecca McBee Wilson? I'm present. Thank you, how about Cinda Bruce? I'm on the line. Thank you, Cinda. How about Todd Richmond? I'm present. Great, thank you, Mark Saline. Uh, I'm here. Thank 
Can you hear me, Campa? I'm here. Tony Campa's here. Thank you. How about Anno Houston? Okay. I'm here. I'm here. I hear you. Thank you, Anno. Thank you. How about Rebecca Austin? Health Department Director, I'm here. Great. Thank you. How about Christina Shearer? Finance Director and Budget Officer, I'm here. Great. Thank you. Roy Kenyon? Public Works Director, Roy Kenyon, I'm here. Great. Thank you. How about Jonathan Cable? Jonathan, you're on mute if you're trying to talk. Okay, anyone on the phone that hasn't already spoken? All right, and let's try Liz Olson again. Nope, not yet. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call, well, I think I already did, but we'll call a, a meeting to order again. Uh, the first thing we need to talk about is election of Lincoln County Budget Committee officers. We need both a chair uh, and a secretary. Madam Chair, this is Commissioner Hall. And okay. may I be right? Yeah. Uh, normally, it's been longstanding practice to have one of the citizen members chair the budget committee, but I would like to propose, to, if there are no objections, that we elect you as chair of the budget committee this year because you have had to run a lot of uh, large Zoom meetings like this, and you have gotten very good at herding the cats. So for this year only, I'm going to propose that we vary from practice, and I would like to nominate Katie Jacobson as chair of the 2020 Lincoln County Budget Committee. This is John okay. Baird. I would second that. Okay, John seconded. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Are there any nays? Okay, thank you. Um, and yes, I, I have gotten good at herding cats. Um, Second, we need to uh, elect a secretary. Um, I would suggest that since we have a commissioner as the chair this year, that we make sure that that secretary um, role, even though there's not a whole lot of actual responsibility, uh, be one of our public budget, budget committee members. I'll take that one on, Linda Roy. Okay, we have a self um, self motion by Linda Roy. Do we have a second? I'll send that. Mr. Commissioner Hunt, I'll second that. Great. Thank you, Commissioner Hunt. All in favor say aye. 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 Are there any nays? Okay. Thank you. All right. Next, um, this is the meeting of the Lincoln County Animal uh, Services District Budget Committee to present. See, let, me say, let me say that differently. Next, we're going to hear from our uh, Animal Services District uh, on their budget for the uh, FY 2020-2021 um, fiscal year. This is presented by uh, Budget Officer Christina Shear and Laura Broxling. Okay. Um, normally, we start these off with a formal reading of the budget message, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. If um, you're following along on the PDF, it is page 263 of the budget document, um, but I'll go ahead and read it into the record. This budget portrays the expected financial performance of the Lincoln County Animal Services District or District for the fiscal year 2021 and shows the operations of the district. The district was approved by voters in the general election of November 2012 with a tax rate of 11 cents per 1,000 of assessed value. In conformance with Oregon Revised Statutes, Chapter 294, this budget is balanced between its revenue and expenditures. The district is budgeted using the modified accrual basis of accounting, recording revenues at the time they become measurable and available to finance expenditures of the current period and recording expenditures at the time liabilities are incurred. Significant revenues include property taxes, dog license fees, and other animal shelter fees. No major changes in financial policies are anticipated for this fiscal year. 
The district is organized into one general operating fund appropriated by the categories of personal services, materials and services, capital outlay, contingency, and ending balance. The district's general fund contains two program departments, one for the activities related to animal control and the second for the operation of the animal shelter. The 2021 budget in the amount of $1,395,359 is $70,977 less than the prior year's budget. This is due to countywide efforts to control costs and is more in line with historical expenditures. The fund's contingency is estimated at 299,659 for the 2021 fiscal year. The district's ending balance is comprised of this contingency and a reserve for compensated absences of $25,942. The combined ending balance is 30% of the total fund. And with that, I'll turn this over to um, Laura for any additional comments. Yeah, I don't um, have any additional comments uh, really to present. Our revenue is actually, even with um, needing to uh, move the animal shelter this year and, and everything that's been going on, our revenue is actually um, slightly bit higher than we anticipated and our um, expenses are a little bit down. Um, so, um, and there's no major changes uh, really for next year's budget. So unless anybody has any questions, Uh, Linda, Katie, oh, sorry, Katie, you're muted. Thank you. Sorry about that. I'm glad, glad you caught me. I was just talking away. Um, it makes it a little easier if I just kind of call names to go through questions and everyone um, jumping in. So I'll go through our budget committee um, first. So Terry, do you have any questions about the animal services? Budget? I do not. Okay, how about uh, Linda? Do you have any questions? And just just uh, what the future plans were in general, not a big, long, drawn-out thing, because I know it's it can be quite complicated. Um, but the, the facility that current, you currently are operating out of is temporary, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, and, and, and I think I've heard certain things that a location, a tentative location has been identified. Is that still the status? Uh, yeah, and uh, Wayne might be able to speak to this better, but um, just talking with the county um, about a possible location, but nothing has been finalized. Okay, and then that's 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 good enough. Thank you so much. Sure, thank you. Okay, how about John? No questions. Okay, Commissioner Hall. No questions. Okay, Commissioner Hunt. You're muted, Commissioner Hunt. Yeah, I do have a question. I guess I would ask Laura to uh, tell us about the additional FTE. Um, who, what position is that? Uh, is it filled or going to be filled? Uh, yeah, that was, that has already been filled. We, um, I guess it was last January. Um, we um, decided to combine two of the part-time positions. So we, we no longer have our part-time positions and just have one full-time. So she's been with us for about a year or over a year. Almost a year, yeah. So we're full, we are fully staffed. Okay, and there's no questions um, from me. So thank you, Laura, and uh, we will- Oh, go ahead. This is Commissioner Hunt. I guess last year we budgeted eight, so the increase occurred after the budget and is reflected in the current proposed budget because two part-time FTE would equal one full-time FTE. Yeah, and I think this was already in last year's budget as well, I believe. It's so this is the second year that we've had eight. Well, there would be. I guess the nine. reason I'm asking, I guess, some questions because with a, you know, the current 
policies that uh, we're implementing relative to vacancies and filling those vacancies. Um, I guess as I look at the numbers, it looks like we've added one person to the animal shelter. I recognize that's not general fun, but I'm also concerned about you know, the overall philosophy about uh, limiting uh, the increases in staffing. So I guess we'll move on. This okay. Yeah. That was that was actually added in um, last year's budget, though it, it's not in the current year's budget. That person's been on and approved well over a year. So just to clarify here, um, it sounds like there was a, a merging of two part times into a full in last year's fiscal year, but this year you're not um, you do not have budget in, an additional uh, person. Is that correct? That's that's correct. Okay. Commissioner Hunt, does that answer your question or do you have more comments? Um, I'm still confused, but let's move on. Okay. All right. Um, moving on to the uh, Lincoln County Extension Service District budget. Madam um, Chair, Madam Chair yeah. uh, this is Wayne Belmont. Um, can we just have Chris, Christy weigh in? Because of that we're doing the virtual uh, meeting here, we've asked for public comment to be submitted via email. She could, just for the record, if she could just tell us whether or not we received any public comments on the Animal Services District budget, and we can note that for the record. Sure, that's fine. I was planning on doing that later, but we can do that as we move through each of these. So. Um, yes. Was there any, any public comment on the Animal um, Services District budget? No, I have not received any public comment um, on the BOC email. Okay, great, thank you. All right, uh, moving on to the uh, Lincoln County Extension Service District budget. Um, Christina Shear and Wiley Thompson. I'll, I'll let uh, Christina work um, start off with the budget message. All right, so the budget message for the Extension Service District. This budget portrays the expected financial performance of the Lincoln County Extension Service District or district for fiscal year 2021 and shows the operations of the district. The Extension Agency for Lincoln County is operated in conjunction with Oregon State University and the Extension Advisory Committee. The district was approved by voters in the general election of November 1988 and has a tax rate of 0 0.0451 per 1,000 of assessed value. In conformance with Oregon Revised Statutes, Chapter 294, this budget is balanced between its revenue and expenditures. The district is budgeted using the modified accrual basis of accounting, recording revenues at the time they become measurable and available to finance expenditures of the current period, and recording expenditures at the time liabilities are incurred. Significant revenues include property taxes. No major changes in financial policies are anticipated for this fiscal year. The district is organized into one general operating fund appropriated by the categories of materials and services, capital outlay, contingency, and ending balance. No personal services or costs are budgeted in this fund. Quarterly payments are made to Oregon State University to support numerous agency programs. Some small grants flow through this fund to facilitate some programs. Other expenditures incurred by the county, such as audit and budget preparation costs, plus the district's annual lease payment to the county general fund are included in the materials and services category of, the fun, of this fund. The 2021 budget in the amount of $1,245,829 million, or I'm sorry, $1,245,829 is $204,898 is more than the prior fiscal year. The fund is carrying a contingency of $250,000, a reserve for future lease payments of $150,000, and an unappropriated ending balance of $300,000, comprising a total ending balance of $700,000. The combined ending balance is 56% of the, the total fund. I will note at this point, it's not in the budget message, but this represents the county's funding of extension operations. It's not the full extension budget. Um, and personal personnel that are hired by extension are actually hired through Oregon State University. Um, and they're funded through the materials and services line of this budget, but do not show as personal services, even though they are funding personal services on behalf of the extension. 
And I'll turn it over to Wiley at this point. Thank you, Christina. Uh, and I'd like to just say to the commissioners and, and the people of Lincoln County and our budget committee, thank you for all that you do and the continued support that you offer. Um, the, the one thing that, you know, there was an increase this year um, we did have in our um, expenses and the program expenses go into our, our personnel that are supported at the local level. And a lot of that was driven by the increased cost in PERS, which I think everybody is, has been hit with. Um, uh, just something very important to highlight, the, the support staff that, that the county supports, and those are our program assistants that will support our, our ag programs, our 4-H programs, uh, you, you uh, for 2.18 FTE. Um, one of those folks who is a 0.5 FTE actually got a farm to school grant for Lincoln County um, in, in the amount of $128,122 uh, for the community. And that, that's just great. And, and uh, she's, you know, a, a, a local person, just fantastically talented. And we're actually hoping to, to bring her on more uh, to work in the, um, uh, across the natural resources sector to support the community um, when, uh, when her life um, sort of fits that. Um, the, uh, we like to make available about 5,000 in um, local grants uh, for faculty to sort of compete and, and work with, and they can use those funds to do, um, I would say, uh, opportunity uh, programming in the communities or what might be seen as margin of excellence opportunities. So things that, that come up that we like to do for the communities to, to take a, a advantage of moments as, as we see them. Um, and at that point, at this point, I'm uh, happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay, thank you, Wiley. Uh, Carrie, any questions? No, I have no questions. Okay, thank you. How about John? John, you're on mute if you're talking. Yeah, I'm on mute. Yeah, no questions. Okay, Linda, questions? No, thank you. Okay, okay Commissioner Hall? No, thank you. Okay, Commissioner Hunt? No, it's pretty straightforward, no questions. Okay, thank you. I would just uh, add, you answered most of my, not, not so much qu uh, questions, Wiley, but just wanting to put clear for the public that this um, budget is a little wonky because it does pay for personnel, but it doesn't, it doesn't show like most of our budgets do because those um, employees are OSU employees and not Lincoln <laughs> County employees. We kind of explained that. Um, the other thing I just wanted to say is um, just a personal thanks to Wiley for helping us in our uh, emergency management with COVID-19 and taking on um, writing our recovery plan for us. So just a thank you to you for stepping up and doing that extension to a good partner. Happy to help out. Okay, uh, since we have no other questions or comments there, we're gonna move on to Lincoln County Solid Waste Disposal Service District budget presented by our budget officers, Katrina Shear and Mark Salings. I'll let Christina start with a budget message. Oh, actually, sorry, no. Did we receive any uh, public comment in regards to um, the extension service district budget, Christy? No, I have not received any public comment for the extension service district. Okay, great, thank you. Now we'll move on to solid waste. Christina? She's muted. Oh, you're muted, Christina. Sorry about that. Um, I'll go ahead and get started, sorry. Lincoln County Solid Waste Disposal Service District. This budget portrays the expected financial performance of the Lincoln County Solid Waste Disposal Service District for the fiscal year 2021 and shows the operations of the district. The district was formed in accordance with the Oregon Revised Statutes Chapter 451. The district's functions are to coordinate solid waste management planning throughout the county, to implement waste reduction, to foster recycling education and promotion programs, and to coordinate illegal dumping enforcement, prevention, and cleanup. 
In conformance with Oregon Revised Statutes 294, this budget is balanced between its revenue and expenditures. The district is budgeted using the modified accrual basis of accounting, recording revenues at the time they become measurable and available to finance expenditures of the current period, and recording expenditures at the time liabilities are incurred. This fund is classified as an enterprise fund, relying, relying on a $4 per ton surcharge on Lincoln County Waste Disposed of as its main revenue source. There are no major revenues and financial policies anticipated in this fiscal year. The district budget is comprised of one general operating fund appropriated by the expenditure categories of personnel services, materials and services, capital outlay, contingency, and ending balance. The district's general fund is organized into two departments, one to provide for general district programs, and the other enables increased forest enforcement activities funded as a cooperative public-private effort through the district, the county sheriff's department, and the Association of Concerned Landowners. The 2021 budget is $372,279, $1,811 less than the prior year's budget. The district's ending balance is comprised of $3,460 reserved for compensated absences and a contingency of $666,085. The combined contingency and ending balance is 64% of the total fund. And with that, I'll turn this over to uh, Mark Salins for questions. So um, before questions, I wondered if I could add a couple of things. Of course. Um, so Christina, you had me worried there for a second because when they wanted the budget message and no sound was coming out, I first thought was, oh my goodness, was I supposed to be doing this? <laughs> um, what I wanted to add um, largely because I'll be retiring here in a couple of months. Um, I've now been in this position for coming up on 13 years. And for those of you who remember, uh, just shortly after I took the position, we moved into the, re the Great Recession. And so um, during a good period of time, uh, we actually had to prioritize uh, quite a few of the services the district offers in those early days. And at one point, I recall that we were down to reserve of only about uh, no, it was just a few thousand dollars, and that was worrisome. So through, um, you know, tightening our belts and really focusing on priorities, we were up to uh, a carryover of about thirty thousand dollars three or four years ago. Well, fortunately, um, Georgia Pacific is now moving all of their waste to the Coffin Butte landfill uh, through doll disposal. And that's primarily what you're seeing reflected in um, such a large carryover balance. Um, at the end of the fiscal year last year, uh, that had built up to about 375,000. You know, now we're at 667,000. The only thing that the district has added with that kind of money in play is that we also implemented our and the Board of Commissioners approved, as did the cities, our new solid waste management plan. So within this budget, there is $80,000 in contractual services money that might or could um, be spent during the upcoming fiscal year, uh, wholly in support of implementing any of those goals that are in the materials management plan. One of the primary ones, of course, we've talked about in the past has been um, Oregon Green Schools. And that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Um, questions from the Budget Committee? Carrie, questions? No questions from Carrie. Okay, John? No, no questions from John. Okay, Linda? No questions from Linda. Okay, Commissioner Hall? No questions from me. Okay, Commissioner Hunt? I don't have a question, but I will make a comment. Um, when I was literally a, a brand new commissioner, I think one of the first um, issues that came to my attention was the Solid Waste Advisory uh, Committee. And um, 
I think Mark and I would agree that at that time it was kind of dis in a state of disarray, but Mark and I got together and we talked about what we might do to uh, revitalize that committee. Uh, Mark came forward with a set of recommendations that um, uh, overall were implemented. And um, I think in the last five or six years, the, the advisory committee in uh, functioning, they've been working together there's an attitude of cooperation and um, I think uh, it's uh, a real tribute to some of the leadership that Mark provided in his role as the manager of the district so I just wanted to give Mark that recognition yeah I, I want to just recognize you Mark as well I know that you're retiring here within a few months and have been with the county um, you know quite a few years and have done a lot for us so just to uh, thank you to all that you have done and I, hopefully you're not a stranger after you retire so thank you well i'm not moving anywhere so uh i appreciate the compliments thank you <laughs> thanks okay um any christy was there any um public comments received about the solid waste uh disposal service district budget no public comment for the solid waste disposal service district Okay, thank you. All right, we're now gonna move on to Lincoln County Transportation Service District budget, which is gonna be presented by our budget officer, Katrina Shear and Cinda Bruce. I'll let Christina start it off with the budget message. Okay, and I'm off mute. <laughs> <laughs> Happens to the best of us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Lincoln County Transportation Service District. This budget portrays the expected financial performance of the Lincoln County Transportation Service District for fiscal year 2020-21 and shows the operations of the district. The district formed in May 1996 is approved by voters in the general election. A tax rate of 0.0974 per 1,000 of assessed value was approved in the November 1996 general election. In conformance with Oregon Revised Statutes Chapter 294, this budget is balanced between its revenue and expenditures. The district is budgeted using the modified accrual basis of accounting, recording its revenues at the time they become measurable and available to finance expenditures of the current period, and recording expenditures at the time liabilities are incurred. Significant revenues include property taxes and federal and state grants. There are no major changes in financial policies anticipated in this fiscal year. The district is organized into one general operating fund appropriated by the categories of personnel services, materials and services, capital outlay, contingency, and ending balance. The 2021 budget totaling $6,629,390 is 938 and $51 more than the prior year's budget. The fund's contingency is estimated at 917,198 for the 20 that should read 2020-21 year, including compensated absences. This amount is 12% of the total fund. And I kind of mangled that last sentence. If anybody wants me to repeat it, let me know. Cinda? Okay, I think you did just fine, Christina. Thank so, you. Um, whew, so, uh, where do we start with this? I think I'm going to uh, um, explain some of the uh, things in my capital outlay budget. It's it's quite a bit. Uh, some of you may wonder why I have 1.745 million in there. And that is to uh, cover the cost of three category B buses. Those are 10 year, 350,000 mile buses five category C buses. Those are our mid-sized buses and they're seven year, 200,000 mile buses and one category E modified van, which is four year, 100,000 mile bus. Also in the um, capital outlay are cameras for the new buses, swiftly real-time transponders, radios and bike racks. Um, we have no, let's see, with some of the enhancements that we're doing um, in some of the areas or our proposed enhancements, um, we will be bringing on um, about four new 
transit drivers um, to cover those. And um, some of the enhancements that we're looking at are to um, enhance the Costa Valley Express. We are going to um, add Sunday service in the South County area, start a new Yahats Wallport bus loop that will operate Monday through Friday, and uh, serve residents on the east side of Silettes down by where their recreation center and um, their gym uh, get people uh, down on the other side of the city because all these years we have uh, pretty much concentrated on the east side. So we'll be serving both sides now. Any questions? Okay. Ms. Um, yeah, this is John. I want to say very good job. You answered the questions I had last year. Oh well, thank you. You know, I thought of you when I when I revamped the um, the narrative, and I also so missed our discussion before the budget meeting this year. Catching so up with I. you. Yeah. All right, thank you, you John. Thank you. Carrie, Carrie, do you have questions? Carrie, I have no questions. Okay, Linda. Uh, Linda has no questions. Okay, Commissioner Hall. No questions. Okay, Commissioner Hunt. Yes, uh, Cinda, what's the status of the uh, bus route between Yahats and Florence? It is currently operational. <laughs> I do not operate the, the bus route between um, Yahats and Florence, that's the Lane County that operates that. However, I did have a discussion with Kelly Clark from Lane County two days ago, and we are going to, um, we're going to have a conversation because I think there's some things we can do to enhance connections. between the Florence to Valley, or excuse me, the Florence to Yahat connector and um, Lincoln County Transit, which would bring folks up north from, from Yahat. Okay, very good. Yeah, my question, uh, you answered the, the next part of the question, which would have been, you know, are there some issues with that route? And um, I, do know that uh, it was uh, it's a route that's really managed and overseen by Lane County. So if there's anything that uh, we can do or I can do in helping you address some of those issues, uh, let me know. But um, thank you. Thank you. And this is Commissioner Jacobson, and I just have one question for you. That, uh, you know, all these um, amazing new buses that are budgeted in our next fiscal year. Um, when might those start kind of arriving? What's the timeline? Okay, so um, I work with our fleet service manager, Mark Malnack. Um, we mm -hmm. order most of our buses off the state bid price for a couple different reasons. Um, one of them is that it ensures that we're meeting all the federal clauses in our, our procurement. And um, they've gone through the uh, and 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 done a lot of the footwork for us. That's not to say that we still don't go out to bid. We go out to bid with multiple state bid price vendors. So uh, Mark and I worked on this, and we um, we got the uh, RF RFQ. Uh, mm -hmm. RFP. Approved, approved by ODOT. So, um, long story short, we have the vendor who's going to be uh, purchasing or who's going to be building these vehicles, and that just happened last week. Okay. Um, with all the COVID stuff, it's kind of slowed the process down, but we have until June 30, 2021, to receive the buses. 
So we have the orders in and plenty of time to receive them within our contract period. Okay, thank you. That answers my question. You bet. Um, okay, was there any, Christy, was there any public comment about the um, Transportation Service District budget? No, I haven't received any public comment for the Transportation Service District. Okay, thank you. All right, moving on, we have a message from the Board of Commissioners. Um, Commissioner Hall or Hunt? Yes, would you like me to read the message, uh, Chair Jacobson? That would be great, thank you. I'd be happy to. The that works for me too. Thank you, Commissioner Hall. Mm -hmm. The Board of Commissioners, with the assistance of the County Management Team, presents a balanced budget for fiscal year 2020-21. This budget document represents an important shift in direction in the county's approach to budgeting, triggered in part, but not exclusively, by the COVID-19 pandemic. However, we continue to be guided by the county's mission statement, quote, to provide essential public services, both legally required and locally desired, in an efficient, effective, and respectful manner. In managing this crisis, we have had several important goals. Fulfill our important role as the local public health authority to monitor disease transmission and educate the public and take steps to protect public health and safety. To maintain continuity of county operations to the greatest extent possible while protecting our workforce and to serve as a partner in the long-term recovery of our communities. The economic impacts of the pandemic are intensifying what was already a challenging budget picture for county operations in 20 to 2021. We expect minor to severe impacts on many revenue sources, including federal grant programs, permit fees, transient room tax revenues, and property tax revenues. While being cognizant of this reality, we're putting forward this budget with no proposed elimination of staff positions, though we will be monitoring our revenues and expenditures more closely than ever before. We are reducing funds allocated for materials and services, and have also instituted a more rigorous process for filling vacancies, including holding positions open for set time periods. Our current path eventually produces costs exceeding projected revenues if left unchecked. Therefore, we can expect to see significant ongoing belt tightening and expenditure reductions in future budgets as the new normal post the COVID crisis. It is the paramount goal to continue the stable county service environment we have nurtured since the recession a decade ago. We are continuing to work on various capital projects with the most urgent being a permanent replacement for the Lincoln County Animal Shelter, which had to be demolished because of a toxic mold problem that surfaced last summer. Although we have a functional temporary shelter, we are still committed to securing a permanent new facility. We always close this message with a thank you to our employees, and it's more heartfelt than ever this year. They have done an outstanding job of rising to the unique challenge of this time. County government is generally held in high regard in our communities, and we know it's because of the many dedicated public servants on our team. It's a cliche to say we'll get through this together, but we will. The people of Lincoln County are resilient and resourceful. We will get through this and see better days again soon. Respectfully submitted, Lincoln County Board of Commissioners. Thank you, Commissioner Hall, for reading that. Um, our budget message, Christina Shear, our budget officer, do you want to read that? I will indeed. The Lincoln County budget message. This budget documents uh, I'm sorry, this budget document portrays the expected financial performance of Lincoln County for the fiscal year 2020-21. In conformance with Oregon revised statutes, the budget appropriates the operations of the general fund on a program basis. The three appropriation programs are general government operations, public safety, and community services. Each main program has various departments within it that are shown by the categories of personal services, materials and services, capital outlay, and special payments. The remaining funds of the county are appropriated by the categories personal services, materials and services, and capital outlay. Additionally, all funds include separate appropriations for debt service, 
transfers, and contingency were applicable. Special reserve balances and unappropriated ending balances are included where needed. All funds are presented as balanced between revenue and expenditures as required by Oregon Revised Statutes Chapter 294. This document is organized on a fund basis. County funds are budgeted and accounted for on the modified accrual basis of accounting. Revenues are recorded at the time they become measurable and available to finance expenditures of the current period, and expenditures are recorded at the time liabilities are incurred, except for interfund transfers, transactions which are recorded on the accrual basis. No major changes in financial policies are anticipated in this fiscal year. Property tax revenue is the single biggest source of revenue for the county. The county's permanent tax rate remains at $2.82, I'm sorry, 2.8202 per thousand of assessed valuation. Other major revenues include intergovernmental revenue, grants and payments received from federal, state, and other local governments, a 10% transient room tax, permits and fees charged for specific activities in the county, and charges for services, amounts charged for direct service provided by the county. The 2020-21 budget totals $110,399,551 an increase from the current year of 9,265,870. This 1.2% increase is minimal compared to past years and reflects county efforts to contain costs and reflect the uncertainty surrounding the future in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. The combined countywide contingency and reserve categories amount to 21,910,986, which is 20% of the total county budget. The graph below depicts the activity distribution expected for 2020-21. Um, the breakdown for those of you that do not have a document in front of you shows general government at 29%, public safety at 22%, community services at 29%, debt service at a fraction, it's, it, it's showing a zero, but it is a fractional amount, and contingency reserves of 20%. The total general fund proposed budget is 44 million. $658,556. In the general fund, personnel services are decreasing by $864,983, a 3% decrease versus the current budget. Materials and services are increasing by 1% or $153,722, and capital outlay is increasing by 81% or $964,268 from the 2019-20 fiscal year. The combined contingency and reserve categories for the general fund for fiscal year 2020-21 are estimated at $5,124,475, representing 13% of the total fund's operational expenditures. And I'll entertain any questions that anyone has on the fund in general. Thank you, Christina. All right. Um, Questions. Carrie, do you have any questions? Carrie has no questions. Okay, how about John? John has no questions. Linda? Linda has no questions. Commissioner Hall? No questions. Commissioner Hunt? No questions. And this is Commissioner Jacobson. I, not so much a question, but just a, um, a comment. Um, first, I want to thank Christina for um, joining our team, uh, you know, joining it, and then we're in an emer state of emergency. So <laughs> thank you for coming on board and helping us with this. I feel like you've made um, a number of changes to the way um, we budget and also just present the material. So that is much appreciated. Thank you. Um, and that's all I have. Um, Christy, do we have any additional public um, input? No, none was received. Okay, I would remind um, I would remind the public that might be listening to this or watching it that um, the email to use to send public comments, uh, both for our budget committee but also in general right now, is boc at co.lincoln.or.us. So in preparation of our next budget committee meeting um, on May 21st, you could send your, your comments to that email. All right, is there any other um, business, related business that um, 
any of our budget committee members would like to discuss? Carrie, anything you would like to discuss? I have no questions or anything else to discuss. Okay, John? No questions. I found the budget very easy to read. It's always been good, but it was a step up. It was better. That's in large part to, to Christina, I would say. Um, Linda, thanks for yeah. further discussion questions. No, I'm good. Thank you so much. Commissioner Hall? Now, I just would echo the other comments. Christina has been a wonderful addition to the team and talk about uh, baptism by fire. You know, we're scheduled. I know uh, Chair Jacobson will announce that we're scheduled to meet again on Wednesday night, the 20th. What's that, 13 days from now? And, uh, you know, it, we always know that the budget is a roadmap and we follow it as closely as we can, but there are always changes. But uh, I wouldn't be totally surprised if uh, something, something even, uh, we get some surprise between now and then, but we will deal with it because we are resilient. We are Lincoln County, right? Yes. I, I would say I hope it's a positive surprise. I'm I'm done with the other kind for this year. Um, <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. No, I'd just like to say, Christina, for your first budget meeting, I think uh, you hit a home run. So. Uh, Good work and uh, thank you for uh, some of the suggestions and changes that uh, you've worked on to address uh, what could be or could have been some various serious budget issues in the future. So thank you for your attentiveness and tenaciousness in uh, helping us improve and address uh, the budget. Thank you. Yeah, I would just add this is also. Um, Carrie's first um, budget committee meeting with us as well. So thank you, Carrie, for um, jumping in and, and missing an emergency and, and totally different format than how we normally do um, our budget meetings. So um, I think when we talked um, a while ago when you had applied, just disregard everything I said about how we do our process. Um, but but thank you for thank you for jumping in. Um, all right, with that I'm going to go ahead and. Um, we're going to uh, stop our meeting for this evening, and it continues on May 21st. I think Commissioner Hall is the 20th earlier, so I just want to correct that. May 21st, 2020 at 6 p.m., and that will continue to be an online uh, format to comply with social distancing. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Good night. Good night.